Here's an Oxalis species under lights and getting a little bit of sunshine. This guy came from the Hortville in South Africa. It has a little fuzzy leaf and a nice flower with a nice pink with a white and yellow center in it. It's a coalescent one, so it crawls around, long stems. Uh, there's another clone of it here. Uh, you can see, uh, maybe not with this phone, but it's a... Uh, they have different like pistol stamen configurations. There's three different configurations possible in Oxalis. And generally one variant will cross with the other two, but will not cross with one that looks like it or is in the same, you know, has the same conformation. But this is a different one where the pistol's on top and the stamens have two sets below. This guy's got stamens on top and bottom with pistols in the middle. Um, there's some other species here too as well, among many other things. We have some pelargoniums in leaf. This is Pelargonium rapaceum, which has carrot-like leaves. It's a winter grower and I have almost sweepy looking flowers, sort of, kind of, when it blooms. And it'll bloom when the leaves get ready to die back. We'll cross over here to another stand. These are leaves of uh, Pelargonium uh, articulatum. It's been used to breed the, Ar uh, the Zone Arctic hybrids. Uh, that was done by Cliff Blackman in Australia, and there's a substantial group of folks growing them in the Scandinavian countries, from what I have seen in the UK. They are hardly known here in the US, but this is the ancestral species. I've seen it growing in the Nohotvila area, and also uh, on a mountain pass um, that descends from that area down into the plains below as you go towards the west coast area. Um, it tends to prefer growing in shade, although here it gets quite a bit of light. Uh, early South African shade. It's on the shady side of the hills that, where it grows there among grass and other things, usually with a rock nearby. Probably helps it, you know, protect it from temperature changes and moisture stresses. Um, this guy's producing a lot of new leaves. Um, there's another Oxalis over here. This is Oxalis luteola, I believe. Um, this guy, particular one, came from an area near Darling. Um, and it's got the nice little red backing on the petals. This this trait does vary in the wild from what I have seen. So this one has a nice little red backing, it makes a little like, you know, the buds look cute, like this guy that's closed. You can see it has the little red markings if you look close. Uh, and this is a good long blooming plant. There are several clones of it in cultivation and uh, it's not uncommon in the wild, at least in the areas it grows in. And it's a very pretty plant. Going over here, there's a bulb in bloom here. I don't even have a label on it. It uh, looks to me like this might be uh, Masonia jasminiflora. Uh, which is one of the Masonias, these low-growing low bulbs with nice flowers that are often fragrant as in this particular species. Um, their nomenclature is a bit challenging, uh, but it's not any worse than that of Oxalis, at least in South Africa where there's so many of them. Here's a really pretty Oxalis. This one has a beautiful red center, purple, you know, pinkish petals and a white eye around that. Really pretty guy. I'd have to look at the label. I think he's one. It came straight out of South Africa. Yeah, this guy's from the Enjo area, most likely of South Africa, a place called Enjo, a farm in the Western Cape in the Bido Valley. Um, and it's a real charm of a pretty plant. Um, this is a pot of Oxalis uh, dregii, used to be called Simpli Simplifolia or something like that, or Simplex. It has a Single leaflet for a leaf. This guy's unusually small because I didn't get around to repotting these guys. So they're all like choking each other. It reproduces very rapidly by bulbs. It's, it grows in a couple of areas in the Cape. I've seen it growing wild. And where it grows, it always grows in wet areas, like in pretty much like wet road ditches or along rivers uh, and the edge where it's wet. And, you know, it's growing in mud, basically. But like all the winter growing South African Oxalis, you can dry it up in summer to a crisp. And it's fine because that's when it's dormant and then it'll grow again. Behind it, we see some satyrum orchids. I grew these guys from seed, actually. I think it may have come from Silver Hill. Um, and I scattered the seed around. And uh, it's one of the Cape ones. Um, and they're setting up new leaves this year. Hopefully they'll flower. And sometimes if you take the South African terrestrial orchid seeds and sow them around in the same pot or in a pot of other orchids from a similar area, you sometimes get babies that way. Of course, tissue culture is another way to do it, and I've sort of done that too using an aquarium. Although I think a uh, laminate flow hood would be much easier to work with. And then we'll go over here and see what else we can find. Um, this guy over here is Oxalis stenorhynca. This is a plant I bought back from a collection at the Crew Botanic Garden years ago when I worked at the New York Botanic Garden. 
it's gotten around in cultivation in the U.S. It's a real doer of a plant, vigorous. Um, it will grow. I have it outside against the house too, where it grows up in flowers in spring, dies back in summer, and then it'll come up again in the fall because it comes up early, blooms early, and it'll bloom and carry on until frost it gets really severe, and knock it back. Like now, it's been frozen at this time of year, and it'll just pop up again in that protected location. So it gets two cycles of growth, whereas in the pots, it gets one cycle. It'll come up in fall, grow through the winter and spring, dry up for summer, and then come up again in August or September whenever it gets water. Uh, there's other oxalis up here. There's a little sun coming in here. Makes it a little hard, so I'll cast a bit of a shadow. Oh, this leaf is cool. This is an oxalis I got as a form of flava from Bill Baird, who is like Mr. Oxalis here in the U.S., and uh, sent me some nice things. This is a, it looks like a flava type in a way, but the leaf is so finely threaded. Um, and it has a bright yellow, small flower, smaller than most flavas. Um, it, it's past bloom now, but um, it did bloom earlier. And it's got these amazing little leaves. I mean, the leaves of these South African oxalis are so variable. They're more variable than the flowers. And they're all relatively small plants that are easy to grow if you've got the right conditions and understand they're growing needs. Uh, over here we see more oxalis here. This white guy has a little peppermint-like flower. I think this is one. This particular one I'd have to look up its name. It could be Versicolor or something similar. Um, that's probably purpurea here. Yeah, this is one of the forms of purpurea, which is a common and variable oxalis in South Africa. Over here we have another oxalis here. This is Cathartica. It also has a similar leaf to the the very fine leaf form of flava, but much shorter leaflets. And it's got white flowers. It'll continue for a while. The bulbs in that guy will go deep in the pot. Some oxalis have shallow bulbs, some have very deep bulbs. I've seen them in habitat go deeper than a foot, well deeper than a foot for some species, which presumably protects them from predation and animals. Uh, there's a, another Masonian bloom. Lord knows what it is, and the name may not be accurate on the label. Uh, it says it's M18 from Addo, so it probably came from the PBS group. It's got nice little flowers and a little nest there. Let me knock that perlite off. A really cute little thing. I wish, the, you know, the le spring leaves are cool, but they also make it hard when you're crowded growing things under lights because they take up a lot of room. On one hand, they don't grow up and run into the lights, which is annoying, but they also demand their room because they must spread flat. Um, and there are some other things back here. We have a bunch of Elthemia seedlings growing. This is a particularly nice form with grayish leaves. Some are bigger with greener leaves. We've got a lot of seedling uh, pelagonium. Um, uh, what is this guy? He's the small guy. Uh, not, not that small a guy. He uh, begins with an A. Appendiculatum, is it? Yeah. And it's actually a fairly uh, limited distribution. I have seen it in the wild. These guys came from Exhort Seed, this particular group. Um, and uh, it has, you know, it's an easy growing plant. For a plant that's not that common in the wild, it's very easy to grow, you know, if you grow it on a winter growing regime like most of the others. This is an Oxalis Masoniana in this pot, or it might have another name by now, but it's got uh, nice uh, salmon -y orange flowers at yellow centers. This particular plant could have used a repotting, I think. It's a little bit crowded in here with this giant Oxalis obtusa form that got in here from seed and is kind of occupying its space. So I'll separate them out next year. Um, and we have some other Pelargoniums here. This is Incrosatum, the Namaqualam beauty. Some nice buds coming up, beautiful silvery foliage, some an old plant of uh, Pelargonium cerisifolium, some cerisifolium hybrids that I've made here. This is one, oh, I'd have to check the label, and it may not have a label, but it looks like me. This is cerisifolium probably with, eh, it might be with oblongatum. This is a hybrid that I think was an F2 of some sort with cerisifolium in it. It's got beautiful silver leaves. I haven't seen this guy bloom yet. Very tight growth, very silvery leaves. Um, and then there's some of his other oxalis here. This one, something Mike Vassar collected, who I had the pleasure of knowing. Um, he's not with us now. Guy in California really was the first to bring these things into serious cultivation in the U.S. Um, I think this, he was calling this depressa, and it came from, I think it was like the Chritzmond area. Let me see the label here. I'm not convinced this is Depressa, because I know Depressa is a summer growing thing. Yeah, he has Oxalis, Depressa, and there's some PBS number there. It was MV487, I think that's in one for his collection number. This is strictly a winter grower. The leaves do resemble Depressa as I know it. 
and the flowers aren't all that different, but the flowers are never all that different on Oxalis. And uh, it's a good bloomer and doer, but it dies back completely in summer. Whereas Depressa is usually a summer growing species with pink flowers, though I do have a white form of it um, from Charles Kreb, who uh, collected it many years ago. Um, so I don't know. I mean, the nomenclature in these things is kind of shaky. And I think there's a group in um, Stellenbosch University working on them and Godspeed to them because they've got their, they've got their hands full because it's a complex genus. Uh, this is a cool Oxalis I found in South Africa. Uh, this guy came from Enjo area. Um, I call it Rock Oxalis. Um, it has these very large leaves, which in nature are more at press to the ground. It resembles a yellow purpurea, but I don't ever, none of my other purpureas do what this thing did. In the wild, the bulbs actually glue themselves to rocks. And they have a lot of glue. Some of the oxalis bulbs do have a kind of a glue that holds them together and sticks them to things. This guy is, is exceptionally so. And it actually I had a little piece of rock on it. And uh, it's grown, and I'm curious to see how it behaves in cultivation. I do have another plant much like it, um, which I think is the same species. It came from Tellus bulbs and was mislabeled as Misnerii, which it is not. This guy over here. Similar leaf, similar uh, back of leaf, similar color. I will compare the bulbs of the two when they go dormant to see if they're in fact the same thing. Looks again to me something like a, red, a yellow purpurea, a yellow form of purpurea, but who knows, can't be sure. Oh, we do have a label on this white oxalis. Oh no, that's not first color, it's oxalis. Oh, Atacuana, oh yeah, I should have looked at the leaf and I would have known that. Okay, it again has the little white flowers with the little bit of red on the back and uh, it has a weird looking leaf, looks like little hatchets together. See those little leaflets there, like three little hatchets or something uh, in an interesting pattern there. That's a cool little guy. This is an Oxalis flava. I grew these from by crossing pink and white forms with each other. This particular Oxalis species is pretty common all over the Cape, especially in dry areas. The bulbs go very deep, very, very deep, um, and often grow in clay and rocky soils. Um, this I crossed a pink flowered one with a yellow flowered one. They were ex -court. And I got seeds, and the seeds had to be planted quickly. This is one of the, some of the oxalis in South Africa, the winter growers, their seeds are not conventional seeds. They must grow, as they're green, when they pop off, they actually, the pods explode and release them. They grow immediately, and they must land on moist ground and grow. Others make seeds that are typical, you know, orthodox seeds, that where they, they can last till the next year and come up, and that would be like oxalis obtusa does that but not this guy. So I had to gather the seeds using little organza bags and sow them right away, and I got several plants. See, some of them came out yellow. Here's one, a bud coming, and some came out pink. Uh, so uh, it was interesting, um, you know, to grow these from seed, and they took maybe two to three years to flower. There's a little narcissus in there, too, a little uh, one of those. Um, came from a little mix of narcissus from the Pacific Bulb Society in one of their offerings. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Oh, here we've got another oxalis. Well, we've got many oxalis. This is, it was going under the name Condigensis, but I, I think they've given it another name now, or at least this is what Tellus was selling it as. A beautiful yellow flower and frothy, nice green foliage and stems. No doubt these would be more compact if they were outside, but, um, you know, in, if I were an extremely sunny, colder greenhouse, but they do fine out here under lights. Above it is Gladiolus. I think it might be Trichonemus now or something like that, but I got it as Tenellus. This I grew years ago at the Botanic Garden in New York, uh, at the one in the Bronx, and I've saved seed and grown it over the years. I think the original seed came from Kirsten Bosch when they gave away free seeds to members of the South African Botanic Society years ago when you were a member. And as an overseas member, it was a great way to get acquainted with the South African flora. Sadly, they don't do that anymore these days. Um, here's a really cool Oxalis flava type. This one has an almost star-like leaf, very succulent. It had yellow flowers earlier, but even if it didn't have flowers, I grow it for the cool leaves. Again, some Sarissophil Pelagum Sarissophilium hybrids. This guy's going to bloom for the first time. It's, this is a Sarissophilium by Hystrix hybrid, I believe. And this looks like Sarissophilium by Oblongatum, uh, which I have flowering varieties of, but this is a, new, a flowering plant. So this is a new one coming up, so it may vary from what else I have in that form that you'll see later. Going over here, we can see there's a lot of Pelargoniums on the floor. We have the yellow sticky tags for the Oxalis. I mean, I'm sorry, fungus gnats, which are a problem here in winter. This is a Chilean Oxalis. This is Oxalis gigante, I believe it is. It's a shrub that dies back in summer to just stalks, suckling stalks, and get these beautiful yellow flowers. It's really been doing great this year, more so than usual, um, and doing really good. Um, it'll, again, dry up for summer. And then we see behind it Pelargonium 
uh, one of the many forms of Polygonium uh, echinatum that I grow, the sweetheart geranium, an Amakulan species. I haven't seen it in the wild yet. I've been very close to its range and hope to see it next year or when we can travel again. Um, I have it in white, purple, and various colors. Uh, now we'll go over here. Oh, here's more oxalis. This is that one with the white center, but this might be a different clone because the white center is not as pronounced. And this is a nice one too. I got this, this is another one Mike Vassar bought in. Uh, it might be Smithy Eye. It's got like a very distinct leaf. It tends to stretch a bit in this, uh, you know, in green, in the under lights condition, but it grows well and blooms for a long time. Starts early too. And this is uh, Oxalis Pusilla. This is one that's self-fertile. It'll sow around from seeds it sets. And there's, there's lots of little flowers with little tiny red markings in them and very, you know, fine foliage. Oh, there's more of that smithy on, I think. Oh no, this is a different guy yet. This guy, oh, look at those big white flowers there. That's nice. It's by a Polygum Echinatum seedling. I'm waiting to bloom. Uh, this one I'd have to check. It looks like something I may have collected many years ago when I was at the Botanic Garden, but I'd have to check. Um, and then down here, we got some lovelies. There's an Oxalis purpurea, big pink flowered form of it. This guy probably came from Telos. They have several forms of this. Telos bulbs out west is a great source for these in the U.S. Um, and this yellow one, the very circle of flowers, has been blooming a very long time. It's got maroon splotched foliage. This is something Mike Vassar collected. I'm not sure we got a species name on it yet, but it's a, it's a good doer. It does stretch. It comes out with robust stems, multiplies prolifically. The label I have says... MV1773, uh, but I'd have to double check to make sure, you know, sometimes things get mixed up here, but I think that's it. And it's been blooming a long time. And we have, this is something, this could be the infamous weed, Pescapri, or it could be a related species. It's something from South Africa, but it's not, this form is not particularly vigorous. There is a vigorous form that's overtaken. Uh, uh, Mediterranean climate areas. Um, this one says, oh no, this came as a unknown yellow. It sure lo it looks like Pescopri in some way, but uh, you know, maybe something different. Um, we also have some summer growing oxalis here, although it is winter, but they're kind of adjusting to our pattern and they'll, they'll be blooming later. This particular guy, uh, too bad he doesn't have a flower today, is an unusual red flowered form of oxalis obliquifolia, comes from one area. But we'll see him later on. He'll probably regrow in the summer more vigorously. Here is the hybrid pelargonium I made between uh, oblongatum and spirifolium. It's a good doer. I know they're grown in the Sit Wave Hill. It's done very well for them in their glass house. I gave them cuttings. Should give it a name because it's really pretty and really good doer. In summer, it completely dies back, uh, but it grows, you know, with the fall rains and or watering here. Beautiful flowers, very beautiful, and long-time bloomer and vigorous and grows very easily from a cutting, um, so it's not difficult. This oxalis here with the buds is oxalis fragrance. If I was gonna grow one species, this would be it. The species name may not be legitimate because it's an undescribed species from what I can glean on the internet, uh, possibly from the clan crew. Um, it is wonderfully fragrant. It opens in the evening, late afternoon, evening, and it has the most amazing fragrance like violets or pansies. So strong that I can smell it when I come down the stairs to the basement that's next to the garage here uh, when I in the evening. So it's a real beautiful plant, a beautiful purple flower, you know, very pale lavenderish flowers, pink, like pale pink lavender, and just smells wonderful. And it's easy growing and, you know, easy to accommodate like most of these guys are if you have the right conditions or understand their growth habits. These are not things you can water all year long. They don't, they don't do that. And we have some other things here as well. I'll just point out a couple of other small species. This is Oxalis orbicularis, has these cool little purple stripe leaves. Um, there's an Opusilla that's creeped into its pot with the white flower though. This guy does keep his leaves, on, unlike the others, he'll keep some foliage through the summer, so I water him sparingly. And you really grow him for his leaves. The flowers are also white, but they're not particularly exciting. And this is not a species that reproduces fast. I, it might come from Namibia, we're not sure. At least I'm not sure of it. And let me uh, scan around here. We'll go back to look at some other things here. Uh, oh, yeah, we have a lot of oxalis up here. This was a cool new arrival from, uh, let's see, this guy is a species from Namibia. And I got this recently from Bill. This is really cool. It's got a leaf, kind of reminds me of Orbicularis, but a bigger leaf with the white stripe, though. And the flower got a little damage there, but you can see it's been flowering off and on. 
And you know, it's only a single bulb, but it's going to multiply profusely like most of them. So I have no fear of losing it. All you need is one little bulb and these things will, you'll have, you know, unless it dies, you're gonna have many more next year. And then here I have, I had to reorder this from Telos because I lost my plants earlier. Challenging species times. This is Oxalis palmifrons. It has the most amazing foliage. Rarely flowers in cultivation, probably has to have a deep pot for it. It is fairly frost tolerant compared to some other species, um, but I have not succeeded with it outside when I did try it, um, even against the house, but I could try again maybe, but it's got really cool leaves. And this guy's doing pretty well. I'm keeping it in a tall pot so it can go deep and close to the strong T5 light fixture here where it can get the light it needs. Um, let's go around here, back. You can see this garage is, you know, it's a two-car garage for car, two cars, but, you know, priorities, man. So the, the cars are outside, the plants are inside, uh, as, you know, would have to be the case here. Uh, we've got some other guys here. Here's another one with very fine foliage. This might be, oh, is it poly, whatever? I'd have to look at it. Polyphyla, possibly. I think it is a polyphyla form. They they grow all over the Cape. There's another uh, flava here with a rabbit ear leaf, like two of them leaflets. They're all succulent leaf looking things. A rather small flower for this particular uh, species. Um, this is a very cool one, Oxalis. Um, this is I'm trying to remember the name. Hold on a sec while we look at some other stuff. Uh, I should know you because I just put you on Facebook the other day. Uh, he's got a name of. Uh, Monophyla, this is not monophyla, or it might be going under that name, but it should be something else. But it's got a really cool single leaflet. Uh, monophyla, as I know, it has a paler leaf. This one, uh, oh, it's Nortierii, I remember this, it's Nortierii. A nice succulent kind of a leaf, nice uh, blue-green color on top, purple on the bottom. Lovely pink flowers that come for quite a while. Not a hard plant to grow, and produces lots of little bulblets. A very, very beautiful plant, very odd even within the Oxalis group. So we'll put him back up here where we have more things blooming. Uh, you can see there's just different kinds here. I won't be able to name them without getting in there to look at the tags, but they just give you a variety of flowers and foliage. You know, in an ideal world, I could grow these outside if I lived in Southern Cal or maybe in um, a cold greenhouse if I had a greenhouse. They're easy to grow. And if I did have a greenhouse, I'd grow them in larger pots because they will multiply even faster if they're grown in larger pots than what I'm doing here. There have been some hybrids that have come out of Oxalis, and I'm seeing a lot of the Chinese selling them. And, uh, and yeah, this is a cool one I got recently, again, from Bill Baird. It's got a beautiful color, and it's been blooming a while. This is Night Princess. I think it's a hybrid that's come out of Asia, uh, or maybe Israel and made its way to Asia. I don't know. Um, and then this one here is another one. It's, it's got a pale pink flower. It's been blooming a very long time. Looks to me like there's Oxalis gracilis, I think, in its ancestry. Oh, no, that's another Pelargonium. Where is this guy's label? He has a stem. He's crawled far from his pot. Uh, lunar halo. Lunar halo. And it's got a very nice, very nice uh, form to it. So uh, just a couple more to show. This is an Oxalis, which I think I may have bought back from South Africa when I was working at NYBG. It looks, looks like one of the things I may have bought back. It's got pretty pink flowers and... Furry leaves, got goodness knows what it is, but it's from the Cape. Um, we've got um, another little guy here. This is one from the Cape area. This is from the Sunveld, I believe, area of the Western Cape. And I don't know what you are, actually, because they don't come with labels uh, in nature. And they're so variable, it's hard to pin down what you have, even if it's been cultivated for a while. Um, so yeah, the, we'll uh, wrap it up here. You can see a few pellies and other things here, and more oxaluses of uh, various sorts. Some I can't figure out what they are, and uh, we'll uh, come back next time.